In this video, we are going to learn about the most popular psychoanalytic theorist Sigmund Freud. In fact, he was like a celebrity. He was very popular even when he was alive. His theories might seem quite weird to you, especially because he concentrates on the sexual energy in humans in most of his theories. But we will move on to it later. First, we will look at what Sigmund Freud's life was like. Freud was born in a Jewish family. Even though he was born and brought up as a Jew, he was an atheist. His family had faced a lot of financial crisis. But because of Hitler and the Nazi regime, it was even more harder for them to be Jews during those times. Freud escaped from the Nazi Germany when he was very young and he lived in exile in London. Later, he turned to medicine as a career and became a neurologist. Now, Freud loved to experiment. He did not stick on with the existing medicinal treatments. He tried to invent new methods. In the beginning, he did not have great success. The real fame and success came to Freud when he popularized the talk therapy for hysteria. From then on, Freud started to put forward new theories and ideas which has formed the base for psychoanalysis. Today, Freud is known as the founder of psychoanalysis. The term was also coined by him. If we look at the theories put forward by Freud, most of his theories are either confusing or has been totally rejected by today's theorists. But we cannot deny the fact that Freud has laid the base for psychoanalysis. W. H. Oden wrote an elegy as a tribute for Freud and in In Memory of Sigmund Freud he says, If often he was wrong and at times absurd, to us he is no more a person now but a climate of opinion. Some of the major works written by Freud includes Studies in Hysteria, the interpretation of dreams, the psychopathology of everyday life, beyond the pleasure principle, the ego and the id, and Moses and monotheism. The first work that we will discuss is The Studies in Hysteria, published in 1985. Hysteria is a mental illness. The term hysteria comes from the Greek word hysterion, which means womb. Because Earlier, it was thought that this disease was caused by the wandering of womb in a woman's body. It was also believed that only women suffered from hysteria. But Freud believed that hysteria was psychological. He started to use the talk therapy by letting the patients talk freely. And he started to cure these patients. And Freud concluded that the cure has always been in the mind and not in the body. As I mentioned earlier, the studies he made in hysteria led to his fame and success. Moving forward, the first major idea put forward by Freud is the theory of the unconscious mind. That is, the human mind according to him has three levels of consciousness. The conscious the pre-conscious and the unconscious. The conscious mind consists of those memories and experiences that we are aware of at a particular moment. The pre-conscious lies between the conscious and the unconscious and it includes those memories that we are not aware of at a particular moment but we can recall them easily. The third one, that is the unconscious level, is that level of the mind that consists of the emotions, memories and experiences that we are not aware of at the particular moment and also it cannot be recalled easily. The conscious part of the mind is very small when compared to the pre-conscious and the unconscious. Freud uses the metaphor of an iceberg. Only a small part of the iceberg is visible to us. The major part of it lies below the water surface. The same way, 
only 10% of our mind is known to us which we call the conscious mind the rest 90% of the human mind is unknown even we ourselves have no idea about what is going on in that unconscious part of the mind thus the unconscious is a huge part of our mind which is not under our control it acts as a storehouse a dumb box that includes all our painful emotions memories experiences traumas and phobias and as told earlier we are not aware of this and also it's difficult to bring them to the surface the only way these repressed elements are revealed are through dreams slips of tongue repeated actions silences and so on i had already given an example in the introductory video to psychoanalysis where we saw how an emotion is repressed into the unconscious when it is not socially acceptable the most surprising fact is that this unconscious which we are not at all aware about has a huge impact in forming our personality or our behavior and that is why this has become one of the most important studies of sigmund freud now let's see what dream mechanism is so what are dreams are they simply some fragmented images about which we have no idea at all according to freud every element in a dream has a meaning and some sort of connection with what we are So Freud analyzed dreams and he put forward his theory of dream mechanism in the book Interpretation of Dreams. According to him, dreams are the royal road to unconscious. That is what we see in our dreams is directly or indirectly connected to what lies in the unconscious of our mind. so whatever is hidden in the unconscious whatever emotions or experiences are repressed in the unconscious is being revealed through dreams he calls this conversion of the unconscious elements to the dream as the dream work now what lies hidden in the unconscious is called the latent content and what is revealed to us or what we know is called the manifest content thus this conversion of the latent content to the manifest content is called dream work so dreams do have meaning it is connected with what lies hidden in the unconscious now if dreams simply represent the unconscious then why is studying the unconscious using the dreams still difficult the reason is this conversion of the latent content to the manifest content happens through certain mechanisms first let's talk about condensation condensation is the dream mechanism where a single idea it could be an image a thought or a memory stands for several ideas or associations that is a lot of memories that happened in various periods of your life are fused to form a particular image in the dream so every situation in a dream is made up of two or more situations different people places and so on they all amalgamate into one single dream for example sometimes these people whom you just met a few months back maybe your new friends at college or colleagues at work you find that these people study with you in the same class at school in your dream this is called condensation and the next mechanism that we will discuss is displacement here our mind substitutes the original form of the memory with new elements or new forms that are similar displacement is kind of a defense mechanism of the mind of the unconscious displacement takes place when the original memory is so traumatic that when a person remembers it he might get anxious in such cases usually with the traumatic experiences or maybe terrible phobias the mind tries to substitute these experiences with new forms condensation and displacement are only two of the dream mechanisms there are also several other mechanisms such as dramatization regression and so on 
The next Freudian idea that we are going to discuss is about the libido or the sexual energy. But before that, let's see what Eros and Thanatos is as an introduction to libido. In Freud's work, Beyond the Pleasure Principle, he talks about instincts. Instincts are the innate desires in us which do not follow the rules of the society. For example, when you go shopping and you find your favorite snacks and chocolates, your instinct is to grab them all. But then your rational thought tells you, you don't have enough money to buy them all. Maybe pick up one or maybe you will buy them next time. That innate feeling you had first before thinking rationally, that feeling is called the instinct. Aggression, hunger, thirst or sex are all natural instincts in human beings. Freud classifies all our instincts into either Eros or Thanatos. The Eros include the life instincts, which include the sexual instincts, the drive to live, basic impulses like the hunger and thirst. On the other hand, Thanatos include the death instincts, which include aggression, antisocial behaviors, negative feelings like anger, etc. The libido that we will soon discuss comes under Eros according to Freud. In Freud's own words, libido is the force by which the sexual instinct is represented in the mind. Basically, libido is a term used for a person's sexual drive or desire for sexual activity. According to Freud, it is a motivating force in adult life. It is a driving force for all our behavior. Even though Freud uses the term mostly to represent sexual instincts, the term shouldn't be restricted only to that. Libido represents all psychic energy, any form of pleasure which can be derived from the body, not just the sexual energy. It is based on this libido that Freud has made his psychosexual development stages. Before moving into those stages, we will look at the concept of the it ego and the super ego. In between, I hope you are not tired. We have to complete two more important topics about Freud. Earlier in the video, we saw how the mind can be divided into three layers. The conscious, the pre-conscious and the unconscious. That was part of the topographical model of the mind. If we look at the structural model of the mind, a dynamic model, the mind can be divided into the id, ego and the superego. Freud talks about this in his work Beyond the Pleasure Principle. First, let's see what id is. Id is based on instincts. It includes the instinctual desires like libido. As I told you earlier, the first thing that comes to your mind is your instinct. You only think about how to immediately gratify your needs, how to get your needs fulfilled. This it was the only driving force for all of us when we were young. If you give a baby a chocolate, the baby will surely grab it. He won't look whether you are someone he knows or whether you are a stranger. All that matters to the baby is whether the chocolate tastes good or not. Thus, we can say that there is only one motive for it and that is to derive pleasure. Thus, the it obeys the pleasure principle. You should remember that all the desires that we have do not come fulfilled. This is where the superego comes to play. Now, all that we want may not be possible or more like the society won't accept it. There are always some rules or limits for everything. The superego of our mind is aware of all these rules and regulations. It gives us a sense of right or wrong. In fact, the guilt we feel when we do something wrong is because of the superego. It's more or less like that little angel you see in the movies which keeps telling the character to do the right thing. The superego keeps telling the it not to do that or not to do this because you have to follow these rules and these restrictions. It has a kind of moralizing role and it keeps striving for perfection. So we can say that the super ego follows the morality principle. And it's more ideal than real. 
Thus, there is always a conflict between the id and the superego because what these both want is completely two different things. And that's where the ego comes in. The ego mediates between the desires of the id and the critical superego. Let's look at an example. You might have your favorite series that you would love to watch every day. But you know you must study in order to get good marks. Your superego keeps telling you that it's important that you study. But your id keeps telling you that you don't want to miss out on any episodes of your favorite series. Here the ego comes and makes a compromise that if you study this part of your portion then you can watch one episode for the day. Thus the ego keeps the balance between the id and the superego. The ego is very realistic and it obeys the reality principle. Freud has provided an analogy to show the functioning between the id and the ego. So for time being keep aside all the other examples. This is what you will be asked to write for your exam. The analogy is that of a man riding a horse. That is the horse do not decide where to go. It is being controlled by the rider on its back. The relation between the id and the ego is quite the same. The horse represents the id and the rider represents the ego. In relation to the id, ego is like the man, the rider on the horseback who has to hold in check the superior strength of the horse. The ego controls the id but it also knows that putting too much pressure on the id, putting a lot of restrictions on all the desires of the id will take away all its control. So it tries to maintain the balance. Next, we have the psychosexual stages of development. These stages are based on Freud's idea of infantile sexuality. That is, according to Freud, the sexual energy is there in us right from our birth. Here, Freud has given us five stages of psychosexual development. And in each of these stages, the sexual energy in the infant child relocates itself into various parts of the body. So in simple terms, these stages are based on the fixation of the libido or the sexual energy in a particular body part. Freud also mentions that each of these stages are very crucial to the development of the personality of a child. Suppose the child undergoes any problems in any of these stages, it will seriously affect the child's adult personality later in life. We will look at each of these stages one by one. The first stage is the oral stage and as the name suggests, here the libido is centered at the mouth of the child. And the satisfaction of the libido is through sucking and breastfeeding. This stage continues till the child is somewhere near one year old. Now, according to Freud, habits such as chewing gum or smoking are all caused because of the fixation in the oral stage. The second stage is the anal stage. Here, the libido is focused on the anus and the child receives pleasure from defecating. The third stage is the phallic stage. Here, for the first time, the libido or the sexual energy gets concentrated in the genitals. During this stage, the child understands the sex differences and starts to identify with the same sex parent. Freud has a complicated theory about this phase of psychosexual development. He explains the Oedipus complex. The term Oedipus complex was introduced and coined by Sigmund Freud in his work Interpretation of Dreams. It is based on the mythological character Oedipus. In Sophocles' play, the main character named Oedipus kills his own father and marries his mother. According to Freud, this tendency is there in every child. The child will have an attraction towards the opposite sex parent and a hatred towards the same sex parent. So according to Freud, the boy will have an attraction towards his mother and hatred towards his father and the girl will have an attraction towards her father and jealousy towards her mother. This is what he calls the Oedipus complex. According to him, 
a successful outcome of the complex can lead to the identification of the child with the same sex parent and an unsuccessful outcome of the complex might lead to neurosis or homosexuality all these theories has been questioned and criticized a lot it's not like freud has established any of these it's only part of our curriculum because it is the foundation on which psychoanalysis has been built so moving on to the next stage the latency period during this stage the libido becomes inactive or dormant and most of the sexual impulses are now repressed during the latent stage that is still puberty and this energy is being channeled to other activities like playing or studying and after this period of latency or inactivity comes the genital stage during this stage the libido refocuses around the genital area and that is the last stage which will continue for some time in adult life i think i have covered all the major points about freud now when we talk about freud it's very hard to accept the theories put forward by him especially because they are very vague because we can't test it and decide if it is right or wrong it's difficult to say whether he was really a genius or totally insane anyway the point is we have to study freud to know where things began that's all for this video please do subscribe to my channel if the video was useful to you and thank you so much for watching